Welcome to Sacred Sessions, light-filled, uplifting and informative conversations for people on their spiritual path. Join me, Melissa Matthews. And me, Alison Filler here, each week as we openly share our personal experiences and wisdom on life, love and spirituality in the modern world. Hi, I'm Melissa Matthews, and today I'm here with the beautiful Alison Filler here, and we're talking about mindfulness, meditation, and sacred space. It's a topic that's really valuable to both of us, and we've really benefited from it. So, you know, we wanted to share like what our practices are, everyday practices, how we go about it, what we do, you know, what we bring into our space, where our spaces are, you know, and, um, you know, so this is really interesting. And... Alison, she's pretty hot on talking about this, so I'm just going <laughs> to throw over to Alison to have a little start on this as well. Hi, Mel. How are you today? Oh. It is so good to be chatting about this topic. Yeah. And I think the first place we need to kind of start is maybe right back at the beginning at, you know, what was going on in our life when we first felt or were called to or told to meditate and or even have a kind of a mindfulness practice what do you think should we start right back from the beginning yeah are you going to go first (laughs) (laughs) sure i'll go first Uh, (laughs) all right so i think for me having some kind of mindfulness practice, some kind of meditation practice, just some kind of um, alone time, sacred alone time for me came, you know, around 15 years ago um, when I was going through a lot of stress in my life. And I know I've talked about this before, but for me being a warrior that I was, someone who used to always worry a lot and I was going through a lot of things I first um, was guided and told to really take some alone time or to take some time out to because you need it you're getting too caught up in a lot of you know drama a lot of stress and it was really difficult for me to um, see through everything all the time or even know how to put myself first or know what was the right step for me so I started to try to Um, do a little bit of mindfulness and I tell you what it was really hard at first it was so hard I don't know about you but you know when I being such so connected to my family my children everything going on around me all the time you know I probably was a bit of a drama queen back then like it was like I was addicted to the drama not that I wanted to be addicted to the drama I don't think but there was so much drama going on around me that I totally didn't know how to have any peaceful thoughts. You know what I mean? Or just always worrying about somebody else, you know, taking it. Um, you know, it's this, this, and this, and I've got to, got to, got to do this. And that. and what a difference it makes when you actually work on meditation, mindfulness, and getting used to it. And you, for me, I could see the contrast. I was having that quiet time. And then I was going into going into everyday life and thinking, you know what, not everything needs to needs to be here. Is that yep. is that how you found it as well? Well, definitely. I was definitely in a state of fear. You know, mm. back then, like I was completely in a state of fear all the time. And so just the thought and, and fight and flight, you know, that was just yeah. really a time in my life where I was in fight and flight all the time. And to just be able to like stop, breathe, take some time out was really, really difficult because my mind was constantly like worrying about this. Oh my God, you can't take time out. You can't disconnect or you can't say no because what if something bad happens or someone's going to need you or this or that or this or that. And my mind was just, you know, crazy. It, and it doesn't so, stop. And it's it, almost it like, I haven't got stop. time to sit down and meditate. I haven't got time to sit down and just breathe. I haven't got time to sit down and enjoy a book or a cup of tea. That's actually what it highlighted for me once I got used to it. And once I, it allowed me to prioritize a lot of thoughts that were going on in my head. 
and a lot of the things that I was doing, I wasn't efficient or productive because I was exhausted. So it sounds like the same for you too. Absolutely. So the thing that I tell my clients a lot is the reason why we're in our head all the time is often because our heart is filled with pain or we have a lot of emotional stress going on in our life that we are really not dealing with properly and it's really painful to think about the hurt, the anger, the grief, the frustration, all the emotions and in order to cope and survive in life or just to get on and you know do what you need to do we have to disconnect somehow from all that stuff and that's when all the energy goes into our head all the time Mm. and over time that head is just ruling the roost all the time and i was becoming a really crazy person you know even back then i i dealing what i was dealing with and especially, you know, I've talked about dealing with um, a loved one's addiction and drinking and a lot of chaos in my life. Um, I had a lot of fear going on. So it was making me insane. Let's face it, if, you know. It's the uncertainty of the situation around you, you know, like, and I've had that too, the situation around you, the uncertainty, and it just goes around and around in the head. You can't, it just doesn't seem to stop and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, absolutely it, yeah, yeah and there is no sacred alone time there's no sacred space i was i didn't know how to detach and if i did i felt so selfish and guilty so yeah. this was a huge huge part of me learning to be mindful and create a bit of a mindfulness meditation sacred space practice mm-hmm. i had to start realizing that having this time for just me was not selfish or guilty it was really smart and essential because I was getting physically ill and I couldn't be the mum that I wanted to be and I just had to had to start to understand and deal with that's not selfish or guilty it's really really smart so that's the first thing that I would really I say to my clients a lot of the time you know it's having a bit of you know half an hour a day or even 15 20 minutes a day to just go and sit in the sun take some time out and disconnect from yeah. everyone you know you think the whole world's going to fall apart yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or people are going to judge you for being right. selfish <laughs> and and this is the worst thing for us all empaths you know just the thought of someone feeling like we're thinking that we're selfish is yeah. like the worst thing in the world because we know selfish people in our lives that's why we're in this mess in the first place that's right we have people in our (laughs) life who we feel are very selfish or self self self-centered so we don't want to be like that so we go completely the other way so i realized that i had to pull things back into balance and really start to make peace with all this yeah is that is that how you felt at some stage yeah, yeah. So, so when I was very, very young, and I mean, you know, I've always had that connection, um, you know, since, gosh, I can remember as a, you know, as a baby toddler, you know, but I, I was always had this um, feeling and I was, you know, shown by whom I now know are angelic beings, you know, to, to breathe and how important it was within the physiology of the body to calm myself. And, and I, I grew up in a, in a home which was You know, it's quite challenging, you know, with my father, you you never knew what to expect. So, you know, if you, at at an early age, you know, you learn, like you you, you learn from what's around you. So, you know, this breathing thing really helped to keep me calm because, you know, I was very sensitive to a lot of things, but I also knew like if, you know, if he was going to be a bit, you know, um, off kilter and things like that as well. So, you know, it helped me to be calm. And then, you know, and so you remember certain things throughout your life about that, um, you know, and you know, and but then you know when I when I got to a certain um, you know stage a few years ago, I realised again the importance of that. But going back to an essential daily practice for that, you know that that would be really important. You know, as a you know as I got older and in the last few years, you know I realised that you know that this would be a good a good thing to to start doing to really get back into that practice and to really take that time out each day. And I tell you what, you know it was pretty hard. And I remember I'd go to a meditation group 
and you know and and that was a little bit different you know that was a healing meditation group so you know again i was looking to explore that but but what i found worked really well was just even just sitting quietly without any of these distractions and i mean without any distractions no husband no dog <laughs> as much as i love them it's easy for them to distract me uh, no children you know the phone is off the tv's off the house is as quiet as what i can get it or the door shut <laughs> like and that was what i used to do don't don't come into that room don't make eye contact with me i'm meditating but i found that i got used to it and sometimes you know i did it for maybe five minutes a day and just feeling that the breath within my body and just bringing it back to this breath and feeling like the best i could within my body i'm competitive so it was a bit of a competition for me to be able to do it but i just moved i just kept on moving and lengthening that time and now you know at the height like when i'm very very busy like you know doing my readings and working that uh, three times a day easily and each one might have a different reason for me to do that meditation and take that time out but it is valuable and it has made such a difference it's calmed the physiology in the body it's made my connection stronger and you know and this i i, I can't explain like how much better my life feels and looks the drama i'm very very mindful about the drama i'm very aware now of what's going on in my life whereas i didn't have that before so that's what it does for me yeah yeah mm. well i know um just healing that nervous system is such an important reason why i practice meditation every day or stilling myself because I know that my nervous system can get very, you know, stressed out very quickly. And it and yeah. it has in the past. Um, so making it's been such a healing journey for me to heal my health and to heal so many things in my life to to just calm my nervous system, to switch off that that worry, that fight and flight. It's that mind body connection that the more I did this, the more I um, switched off my cortisol and adrenaline and allowed my feel-good hormones to switch on and relax then I started to regain my health and my energy and that was just so important to me and that's why yeah. I found I had to make this a non-negotiable thing yeah because I was not going to live sick or depleted or stressed out anymore i was a mom i was two kids and i was really you know in my 30s i just i didn't want to be like this but when i was forever. in my 30s i thought this is a slippery slope it's not long till i'm in my 50s so i better do something about it now <laughs> so i understand the motivation there allison it's like it did it does make a difference doesn't it and it was the first thing that actually made me feel good in such a long time yeah. and I finally started to learn you know through um, you know finally studying kinesiology and everything that feeling good is not selfish it's really really smart and yeah. essential and so and the more I did it the better I felt the better things started to happen and change around me and I was able to not react so much to things anymore it's like wow just to not have to react about things that I could choose to stay detached or calm yes. was just amazing well one of the, when you're talking about reactions there and I'm sure a lot of people will understand this you know I grew up in a home you know when my father was quite like um let's call him passionate or whatever you want to call him but but you know like, there would be a very quick reaction and very explosive and and so i i learned that so i i you know my first response is you know would be um you know to prepare for uh, to prepare to prepare for some sort of altercation or interaction and you know whereas what meditation did was it slowly released that urge because that's mm -hmm. a cortisol and adrenaline response in the body and yeah. that is why I was shown at such an early age why it is so important to take that out of it why the breathing is important like that mindfulness and we know now like throughout the world like they study mindfulness and they can see the benefits of the health 
And one thing as um, a person who sees um, the energetic bodies within a person and what and how it looks is that when I look at a person under stress, their energy fields are like that. So yeah. th there's a marked difference between somebody who's calm and, you know, but someone who is in a state of fight or flight, that it is a very, very real thing. And to me, I can see that. I could see it in myself at times, um, but I, but I prefer to actually look at myself energetically and see what I look like, and to bring myself back into that state of calm. I know what it does for me physically, mentally, and emotionally. So that's Absolutely. that's that's why I do it too. Do you see Absolutely. like do you see the energetic fields in people? Like how do you work with that? Um. To see, you know, um the yeah, I can see it. it, but I can. For me, it's instantly, I can just feel it. I can yes. feel where the blocks are in people. I can feel how contracted their energy is. And I can, um, yeah, I can feel and sense it well instantly if someone is switch, like closed off and switched off or just they can't actually listen to you a lot of the time because they're not even in their own body. They're just... Yeah. They're, in their head they just can't even l receive the information and that's why it's really important for me <clears throat> learning to meditate it, it really just started with um a day a book that i had i got from alan on called courage to change and it's that every day there is a different passage to read it's a bit like the course in miracles text and things like that and every single day i would open this book to the date of the what the day is and read that passage and that's how it started for me just to be able to read a passage and to receive this new information about how to deal with the things that I was dealing in with my life yeah was really great and so it started that daily thing and then I used to go to weekly meetings sometimes twice a week and I realized very very quickly that if I didn't go, then I did not cope very well. And if I went weekly, if I read these things daily, I started to feel stronger. I yes. still, I started to feel more empowered, more confident and take back my power. So that's that was the real beginning of me realizing how much a daily spiritual practice a daily meditation practice, mindfulness practice is so important for me because if I go days without, it's very easy for me to fall back into my old ways sometimes. And how do you feel when that happens? Well, it's um, it's good now because I can realize, oh yeah, I haven't been meditating for the last couple of days because I've been too busy or whatever. And I just instantly go back and, and do that. I don't beat myself up anymore. No. I just realize, look, I just have been getting caught up again in too much stuff. Or, you know, sometimes really stuff comes happens out of the blues that, are, you know, you have to, that are really quite stressful. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't beat myself up anymore. I just know that as soon as I go back and, you know, do some journaling, meditating, you know, and centering myself, I can deal with things so much better and I can be connected to my higher self and the wisdom of yeah. what I need to be doing. Because when you're in your head all the time, you're just reacting to what you see in front of you. When you meditate and really start to connect to your inner wisdom and your higher self, I it's really such more so much more empowering because I ask myself all the time and I get my clients to ask them, what would I be doing for my highest good? Yes. When it really is such a great question because when you're trying to make decisions about things, if you say what would be for my highest, highest good, good, yeah, you get a whole different bunch of information. That's right. And it's through. it's easier for it to come through as well when you know when when you're used to to practicing and you're used to listening to what comes through in meditation and mindfulness because then it goes into your everyday life. It just, those answers come to you a lot easier and you, you feel very, very sure, well, I do, <laughs> about, yeah. you know, what is the next step to take or not take because sometimes it's do nothing. It's just like, hang on a minute. <laughs>
this is not my thing. <laughs> but trust is such a huge yes. thing. Like it takes daily practice for you to build this trust, you know, yeah. and and our heads and our ego don't like that we're doing this. Let's be honest. Like yeah. our minds don't like losing power or control over things. No. So it is going to fight you a lot of the time when you start to do this because yeah. your brain just wants to be in control all the time. Yeah. Well, we know like <laughs> what I'm like. <laughs> A bit OCD, a bit ADD, whatever you want to call it. But, you know, I I like to balance it. It makes me feel better, um, you know, and that has really helped me, you know, from a health level, you know. Um, I've spoken before with you about the effects of, um, you know, the cancer treatment that I, that I had. Yeah. And that created, um, so there were certain things that happened. And so I had like, you know, I'm up in the 95, 98% for a lot of things. But then there were these, there were a couple of things that, that happened, you know, from that um, cancer treatment. It's called, um, now it's called chemo brain. And, you know, and you have these cognitive, um, they call them deficits or whatever. I just think, okay, I had to learn how to use them again. But that meditation, that mindfulness, so it helped me to go, okay, this is what I need to do. I'm calm. I'm in a state where, um, you know, where I feel good and this is how I now have to work and to bring that information together. And so that was really, really beneficial for me on a physical and physiological level, but it also helped my brain, like my mental and emotional um, states as well, because, you know, that I got used to understanding, like when I was uh, meditating and in that state of mindfulness, I was calm and I could think clearly. So I do have to monitor like my working space and working environments and things like that as well. And I am hyper-focused and I'm really good at whatever I'm doing, but that's what I'm doing in that moment. And that has been really helped along by that, you know, by that, by that daily practice and that real awareness of how my brain works. Yeah. That, that awareness. So, you know, um, yeah. So, mm. Yeah, and leaving the drama out because sometimes I, I like a bit of drama. <laughs> like, <laughs> all in moderation, all, all in, in moderation. Balance, all in but, balance. But, you know, yeah, but just taking on, you know, it helped me to be aware and to, to understand not, not so much what my limitations were, but, but like, you know, okay, I can do that or I can go out on the boat. <laughs> so, which one am I going to do? I've only got so much time <laughs> and I want to really wanted to enjoy myself. So it really started to help me feel throughout the life and that. So, you know, and the best bits of it you know so so i wanted to also just talk now about um how to get out of your head and because i know that it's it's a huge thing when people say oh i've tried to meditate and it's just too hard like you know it's just too hard so there's a few tricks to it so sometimes we just have to trick our brain you know i'm all for like tricking our brain and finding little hacks to like get us out of our head Okay. And the easiest way I've found and, you know, that, you know, lots of people talk about is to get out of your head, you've got to get into your other five, six senses. Yeah. So you can't literally be in your head thinking about things if you are listening to things or feeling things or smelling things or um, looking at other things. It's taking the, your awareness from your brain and putting your awareness in your hearing, your your vision, your smell, or your taste and touch and things like that. So there's so many different ways of meditating and doing a mindfulness practice. Um, and I thought we'd just like share a few of those little ways that um, have worked for us. Yeah. I mean, even listening to a guided meditation is a really good place to start and even if it's just a short one like a 10 minute guided meditation it's really good to start with something short don't you think i look i think so too and it does um it it makes it easy because you're listening to something and you know instead of just hum de dum de dum de dum de dum and if you go so that's yeah that's great and then um the sound bath as well where you might go somewhere and yep. they play the musical instruments. And even like if, like, I've been to the opera and, uh, you know, and I feel that in my body as well. And so that's crystal that's bowl really crystal bowls are beautiful. Yep. 
Was it like um, the the chanting? The um, chanting that really just great. goes right through the body. Like that's that's and, amazing. Yeah. I give everything I, a shot. <laughs> and I do that just you know myself all the time, just to center myself. I'll just be guided a lot of time, just to like go on. Yeah, you can just, feel it down you know, throughout the you day, can feel just it to... down in the heart, like what they call yep. you know, the heart chakra area. Yeah, you can you can feel it there. Yeah. I'm even guided a lot in the last couple of years, you know, to to just sing a little bit of like Alleluia or just like some other kind of little just sounds and songs just to like center me, just to ground me, just to bring me back into my body and clear my chakras, clear the block chi in my energy. Yeah. So, you know, a little song will just pop into my head or a sound will pop into my head. Um those that thing you know chanting is or just saying om is just yeah really vibrational because yeah. being a kinesiologist i really work with vibrational medicine vibrational healing tools and mm. techniques like flower essences you know essential oils sound tuning forks crystals all these things are vibrational and when we're using those we're not in our head so much and it's no and it's and it's very peaceful. You know, I've spoken before about my scepticism, but there's so many good things out there that I, I give everything a shot. <laughs> uh, I've um, I found, um, you know, beautiful um, sprays and drops and things like that, and they do work. They like, do because they well, shift your energy me. and frequency. Yeah, yeah, they do. And I suppose like when you were talking about, you know, you're guided to, you know, sing a song or something like that, if you think about like someone that you see out and they look happy and they're humming and things like that, that is, it's the same thing. Yeah. You know, it's the so same thing. So yeah. walking meditations as well, you know, like you can just go for a mindful walk or, you know, people have walked the labyrinth, you know, that spiral, yeah. the labyrinth, you know, a lot of cultures yeah. have used that kind of mindfulness. Yeah. The Buddhists use making mandalas, creating mandalas, mandalas yeah. because it's a very, you know, just creative thing to be able to just get out of your head and just mm. do the repetition of things like that. There's also sensory walks where you, um, or in, I suppose you could do this in any garden as well, but, you know, um, uh, nearby to us we have um, the Cumberland State Forest and they have a sensory walk and it's essentially for... Um, you know, um, people that may be vision impaired, etc. But you know, they can feel and they can smell. Mm. Um, you know those things, and they can hear the sounds of the birds. You know those sort of things as well. Like a sensory walk is very good. Labyrinths are very, very good as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So, or just even like holding a flower, looking yeah. at a flower. Mm. Um, just looking at a tree is yeah. just very powerful for me. For me, you know, just sitting in the back garden or sitting here and just looking out at the trees and yeah. just blending my energy with a tree or just allowing that energy to to yeah. blend with me. It's that's such a simple and really good thing to do as well. And one of the things that I, I noticed when I lived um, up around the beaches was, um, you know, a lot of the surfers, you know, they get up early in the morning, they go for a surf and they love it. And, and they're just like, they're powering on like through the day. But, you yeah. know, when they're driving between, you know, different jobs or locations or whatever, they always stop in and just have 15 minutes at the beach and they're just looking at the wave. And you can see that, like that real calmness, like come over come over them and I've done it too I just love like going to the beach and just watching those waves or even listening to it or being on a you know being on a boat and hearing that the water lapping you know it does something to you and you know when you were talking about you know the um using like certain oils and just putting it in the the palms of the hands and just smelling it in I mean it just it just evokes such you know it's such a good feeling but it 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 affects everything within our all of our bodies yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. I know going down the beach was one of the first places where I really first connected to my guides and it was just sitting under a huge big pine tree and just watching the waves coming in and out, just flowing in and flowing out, just flowing. That's such a um, mindfulness practice. And then just it helps soothe that nervous system so much to have that repetition of, <laughs> things just coming in and coming out the yin and the yang the giving yeah. and the receiving and that really helped me 
for someone who's such a giver or if you're feeling like you're always giving, 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 doing all the time, but really never allow much energy, love, support, time to come back into you. I started with just watching the ocean and yeah. just watching, imagining the ocean, you know, the tide going out with me sending love out and then sending love back into yeah. me. Yeah. And it really is an important thing to really start to practice your comfortability with receiving love as yeah. well and that's when you can really start to receive the love and the messages from your higher self yeah. many people say you know how do i develop my intuition and hear my intuition more and through this meditation practice and it's really about allowing yourself to receive yeah. and get into that receptive mode don't you think yeah, I do. I do. I've noticed, you know, the, um, really big changes, you know, in the way that I think and the way that I feel about a lot of things as well, you know, and it has come from that. It has come particularly just from taking that time out. You know, I can be seen as a bit of a, oh, yeah, she's off meditating again. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's taking time out again. But, you know, I find it really, really important to do it. Um, it's made a big difference to my mindset you know, about how I do things and how I approach a lot of life and that. So, yeah. So yeah. there's also, um, there's a great app called the Calm app, mm -hmm. which yep. offer, you know, which people should know about as well. If they haven't, you know, they can search for it and that's free and they can do things through that as well. But what, um, you know, you, you love going down to that beach and sitting there under that tree and that that's made a huge difference to you, hasn't it? Oh, totally. It has completely given me back my health and given me um, the strength to be able to, um, well, it's funny, like, there's, I can't take all the credit for it. And, th and this is the amazing thing about meditation, that energy is and vibration is so important and being powerless i just wanted to like talk a little bit about the idea of surrendering yeah and being powerless mm. and that can really that's really helped me to be able to embrace a meditation practice or a mindfulness practice as a non-negotiable part of my life um, surrendering my surrendering everything over to a higher power and being okay with accepting that I am powerless over yeah. people places and things and I learned yeah. that really strongly in my Al-Anon program back in the day when I was dealing with alcoholism in my life and you know, step one in the 12 step program is, you know, surrendering things over a higher power that you are powerless over people, places and things. Yeah. And that's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> um, but you mean I, it, it, you mean it, I can it, give it up control? really helped me to go, oh, my God, I can surrender this over to a power greater than me. Yeah. that I don't have all the answers and that is so absolutely freeing for me that I can just say I don't have the answers and I am praying or asking for the answers yeah. to come to me or for me to get out of my own way. Yeah. And I often say to my guides and my higher self in my meditation practice, um, you know, show me where I need to go, show me what I need to do <laughs> or I say – if this is meant to be, like I've done this in my relationships or, you know, jobs or businesses or whatever, if this is meant to be, if this is what I'm meant to be doing or if we're still meant to be together, mm -hmm. please show me clearly. And things will, it's amazing how much things, things will start to show up either, yes, this is meant to be or no, this is not meant to be. No, that's right. <laughs> And it takes all the pressure off my mind from trying to figure it out. And that's yeah. why I love 
my meditation practice too. <laughs> no, it just like I just find things flow a little bit easier, and uh, you know, being um, over analytical and things like that as well, it does take a lot of pressure off. Like I was saying to you before, you know, I had to have a conversation yesterday where I had to. Uh, so what's been coming up in my my personal meditations over the last couple of weeks is um, distractions. Be aware of distractions. Um, compassion. You know, not only compassion for others, but compassion for myself. And, um, you know, and, and, and of course the boundaries, you know, that's always like coming up as well. I've just got to be really mindful about that. So on my way, what uh, I had to, you know, go and do something. I stopped, bef- I had to have this conversation. So I just pulled over in this, you know, in the car and had that convers, you know, and did that meditation. And I went in and I felt stronger about having these conversations. And the, all the conversation was about was actually... I won't be able to help you with that project and I'm really sorry that I can't do that. Um, I'm really, and it's not with you, Alison, <laughs> someone else. <laughs> but, I'm re- you know, I'm really sorry that, that I won't do that and we don't have actually anybody that can that I can offer to help you. But, look, this is what you need to do. But I felt so strongly, like, about being able to help this person and being able to do my best but I realized that I have to have compassion for myself and I have to have boundaries because otherwise it's going to go into my personal time and if it goes into my personal time then that goes into my personal and family time so you know there were certain things that I had to do so I pulled over I may you know I I centered myself and made myself calm and I thought right I can go in and now and I can have that conversation you know over the phone and um and and that was it and it was really hard for me to do that but you know because I would just I, I would just make it happen otherwise but it's yeah. you know when it's to the detriment of myself and so sometimes it's not so much drama but it's actually wanting to help other people <laughs> yes to the point so it's not like it's not always like people are pulling on me or anything like that it's not that it's just it's my personality to make things happen and to to do things and to to get it done right so you know all I could do was really offer some advice and that was and that was it but you know that's what I mean like before I would have just pushed myself through but you know from listening to what was coming up in my meditations from my guides um they were saying compassion boundaries and being aware of, yeah. you know don't you know don't overstep that so there you know that for me is is really good not only for my spiritual growth but it's also you know personal development and things like that as well so yeah so that sacred space is really important and like you just said you you can do it any time of the day or anywhere you just need to like take some time to take before you make a decision or before you actually doing yeah. stuff to create some sacred space around you to um, connect into what's for your highest good and to be able to center yourself. So, yeah. so yeah, sacred space yeah. doesn't mean that you have to set up a whole meditation room in your house necessarily, or like you know have <laughs> you a can special. You can do it in the car. You can, like <laughs> you can sit in the paddock. You can sit in the paddock. My my sacred space used to, is is really just used to com- um was a tray. I have I love trays. I have these beautiful trays. You do you have them on that, your Instagram? Um, I often yeah. take pictures of and put on Instagram beautiful. and stuff like that. And on this tray, I have things that I've collected like a shells or like flowers or I have my flower essence that I'm using at the moment and a card. And so if I want to sit in bed or if I want to sit on the sofa or if I want to sit in the garden, I can just take my tray with me and, mm-hmm. you know, and that's my sacred space a, a lot of the time. Um, yeah. And that's a cute little way of doing things as well. So just quickly, um, let's just touch on... Um, uh you know, on the things that we use, because I, I do use crystals. Um, I'm always guided, like before anyone comes to see me, like, and the same is for myself, like what I need, like what I need. And I, and I use my intuition as well. Um, so, you know, I might run my hand over, say, you know, like, <laughs> I've got drawers of crystals, right? And I, but I always seem to go to, to where I need to. But, you know, like the crystals that I'm working with now, um, and I'm carrying them around and really using them quite well, there's one that's called Black Kyanite, and that's very, very centering. It's very good for the chakras. But it's very, very good for me right now at this moment, you know. Um, but but there's a, there's a lot, you know, that that I'm in, that I'm guided to intuitively yesterday I needed that and a piece of rose quartz as well you know just in my pockets so I've got to be really careful you know at times and you know but even like with the cards you know you were talking about the cards sometimes I'll pull cards and they can be from a variety of decks yeah definitely you know, 
they're not always the same. Yeah, and I'm always as, like, God, yeah. which which deck do I need to use for this client yeah. or for myself yeah. today? You know, yeah. I just feel into that. Yeah, and sometimes I um, I'll say, please go and choose. Go and choose the deck of cards that you'd like or whatever because, you know, that also helps people to understand their intuition as well and how, you know, that's like the most simple version of, you know, they're choosing the right cards. That's them using their intuition. And you can see, like I can actually see them energetically doing that. It's really lovely actually um, because, you know, it does come down to choice there. So, you know, and so, yeah, with the room sprays and things like that, but sacred space is anywhere that we are. It's anywhere that we are and it's about, you know, for me, it's just about making sure there's no distractions, making sure that I do it and listening to those words, which I can listen to and take advice from works much better. Or I can just think, you know what, okay, I'll put that aside <laughs> and then I'll be told in two weeks later again <laughs> the same thing. So, yeah. Well, that's the thing. The more you honour and respect your sacred energy field, your sacred life, your sacred space, the more you will um, attract others who can, you know, love and respect your you too. And I know that is so important that, you know, what you're putting out there, you can yeah. be getting out. So that's why I want to make a huge part of my day that kind of energy because it just makes life flow so much easier. And... I have this, you know, saying that my guides say to me all the time as well is like, Alison, stay in your own seat, in your own car, in your own lane, on your own freeway and stop trying to drive other people's cars. <laughs> because, and like, that's something that's really, really, you know, gets me that we so, we, we so just want to like, make everyone happy all the time or if we see someone you know like who's not doing their best or coping or blah 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 we just have so many subtle ways of just trying to like trying get to in get there them. and drive their cars for them it's like no no, no stop no, it no focus on your own stuff Alison you know like you've got to focus on your own stuff stay in your own lane and that doesn't mean that you're selfish again that doesn't mean that you don't care about people but it disables people or I become an enabler if yes. I'm stepping over those boundaries. Um, it's an energy also drain. You become, that, cord, that cord, when you do that too, there's like a, well, I see it as a cord and it goes between the two of you and it, you're draining each other's energies. You actually can take on each other's personalities and things like that as well. Oh, yeah. So, you know, so that, that's another that's another conversation. But, but it, um, it, you know, staying in your own lane, in your own car on the highway that was how it was shown to me in a dream the, about distractions like look <laughs> and i'm like but, but this person's about to crash their car like shouldn't i be like stepping in and you know for me because i've dealt with you know issues of codependency and addiction and stuff like that i've had to learn the hard way you know i have seen people yeah. metaphorically crash their cars and hit rock bottom but that is what's needed to happen a lot of the time for them to awaken for them to you know yes. if i keep trying to help fix and rescue them then mm. they're never going to learn and it's you know so that is the best piece of advice that i ever got from one of my meditations and i, I remember this a few years ago and i was saying look god I need help, you know, um, you know, with my, my oldest daughter. I said, I, I'm just, I'm really unsure about this. And the message that came through was very, very clear. Are you helping or are you hindering? And I was like, holy moly, okay. <laughs> By the way, she's great. <laughs> but it took a while for me to stop that as well, to stop that, you know, what I would see is parental love and things like that as well. It's mm. like, well, no, she has to experience it. She's of an, an age where she needs to experience everything and she always knows that she can come back you know to you and talk and things like that but i needed myself to actually allow like that space for her yeah mm. so and it's scary like you know there are <laughs> issues there are things that you know that we do deal with and people deal with that are life-threatening sometimes that yeah. are really really scary and that's why you know 
calling but allowing them help. their space as well to go through it you know that's their yeah. sacred space yeah that is their sacred space you know so they can ask for help and that also teaches people how to ask for help as well because you know Absolutely. that's a big thing a lot of people you know you know don't ask and so it, it shows people that you know what when they do ask people will help people will help so now are we going to talk about anything else or are we going to wrap this up like i think we'll wrap it up but it just reminds me of one other little thing about sacred spaces um and staying out of people's business or how to navigate that is another little you know analogy of like falling into people's emotional holes yeah. you know so many times when we're like around people or even talking to people having catching up with our friends or whatever and they could be going through something so easy for us to fall into their emotional hole or really take on that and then we're both down in the hole and it the really you know and then sometimes they get up and they leave get out of the hole and you're still stuck in the hole still stuck in the hole it's very so, important for empaths to understand that as well, you know, taking on that energy. But, you know, we've got to remember to release it and otherwise it, you know. Absolutely. So just it, yeah. those kind of like images have really helped me understand sacred space and to remember like to um, just just keep myself, not that I'm not, not that I don't care, but just to learn more, how to learn and go to classes and practice meditation and get the knowledge that I needed to be yeah. able to, to, to and deal it's with And it's self-love, it's self-appreciation. And when we do that for ourselves, we're so much, we do feel so much better. We're so much more open to relationships and life and love. But also we see the, you know, we see people for who they are and we love people for who they are. It, it really does open up a whole other way of thinking and um you know and it retrains that brain you know well it did for me anyway <laughs> to That's to it. look on the positive side of things so there you go all right so another fabulous well, conversation thank you allison and thank you everyone for listening in and uh we will be back next week with yep. another fabulous episode so thank look you look forward to it look forward okay. to it bye allison bye bye bye, bye. bye. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Sacred Sessions. Your comments, questions and topic suggestions are welcome. So connect with us on Facebook and Instagram and through our websites. Naturally, all links are in the show notes.